Welcome to the Daily Market Recap, a detailed review of the market structure and the key support and resistance levels in the S&P 500 E-mini. Today is Tuesday, December 17, 2013. On November 13, the S&P rallied above what had been the previous multi-year high and traded up to a new multi-year high at 1812. Prior to the rally, the S&P had pulled back to retest support at or near the previous multi-year high and following the initial rally, the S&P pulled back a second time at or near what was the previous multi-year high, the prior pullback level, at or near 1773. During the second retest of the multi-year high, S&P futures had also held support at or near 1784-1782. Last week, we witnessed the S&P sell off from the multi-year high and once again auction down through the entire trading range. The chart that I'm displaying here is the forward March futures contract, whereas the cash index held support initially at the 1772 price level. In the March contract, S&P futures extended the trading range down to 1765. On Sunday, at the open of the Globex session, S&P futures traded below Friday's low and pulled down at or near the next known reference point, the November 13th low, approximately at the midpoint of the lower trading range. After selling off overnight to 1754, S&P futures auctioned back above Friday's low and during Monday's session rallied back up to 1786, trading completely through the prior two-day distribution. Today we witnessed the S&P pull back from yesterday's high an auction down to 1770, not quite filling the gap at Friday's low and or testing the two-day low that developed last Thursday and Friday. Follow the Bots applies a Bayesian logic approach to analyzing the market. Bayesian logic is a time-tested, standardized method of statistical data analysis. The analysis is quite detailed and in the chart that I'm displaying here I've marked the key reference points that are associated with the recent sell-off from the multi-year high as well as the retracement above Sunday's low. Of immediate significance is reference point number six. The blue line that you see here is the prior support level I indicated on the previous chart at or near 1784. Notice that the market initially paused there during the sell-off and auctioned back up to 1792. When the market pulled back a second time, the selling pressure increased and a review of the time and sales data indicated there was statistical high volume transacted during the breakdown below the 1784 price level. As the market sold down Thursday to 1765, indicated here by the number 9, there was modest statistical high volume at the low. However, during the session, the advancing declining issues were still negative. A similar situation developed on Friday. 
The S&P pulled back again to 1765, failed to retrace back above Thursday's high, and sold off into the close. Once again, the advancing-declining ratio was negative. This information tells us that there was not substantial accumulation at Thursday and Friday's low. We expected the possibility of the S&P breaching support and trading down to the 1754 price level. What doesn't fit into the developing market structure is the fact that during the retracement, despite the reality that there was no genuine accumulation here on Thursday or Friday, the S&P short covered and or gapped up through the two-day trading range and auctioned back up at or near 1784, where the time and sales record indicates there was statistical high volume. Similarly, here at number 15, the retracement back to 1784-1786. Once again, we saw statistical high volume transacted here at the high. Despite the high volume that traded there during Monday's session, the market failed to pull back and retest any of the support levels. Instead, the S&P traded in a very narrow trading range. Coming into today's session, we expected to see a pullback and or a breakdown below yesterday's low, and our estimate was that the S&P would trade down at or near 1768 and fill the gap at Friday's close. Ideally, we would have liked to see the S&P auction down to 765 and retest Thursday and Friday's low. As it turned out, the selling pressure ended when the S&P traded down to 1770 and the market auctioned back up to 1778-1789 before pulling back modestly into the close. For a detailed view of today's developments, we'll focus our analysis on the 5 tick range chart. Here we see prior to the open, the S&P trading up at 1782, failing to retest the high at 1784 or 1786. In order to have participated in the short opportunity at the high, one had to be active prior to the open. The market encountered a lack of buying interest at the high and the selling pressure intensified as the S&P traded down to yesterday's low. The breakdown, however, was a long drawn out affair. Initially, the S&P auctioned only modestly below yesterday's low auctioned back up to 1778 before the selling pressure increased and the S&P auctioned down to 1770. During the sell-off to 1770, two points above our targeted estimate at 1768, the sell programs ended. The S&P auctioned back up to the upper band of the polynomial regression channel at 1778-1779, corresponding with the earlier high, and during the retracement, the buying interest waned, and as we stated earlier, the S&P traded back down to the lower polynomial regression band at the close. The purpose for Extending our recap today is that tomorrow is a major market event. It will be the final announcement this year from the Federal Reserve Open Committee regarding its monetary policy, otherwise known as quantitative easing. There has been a great deal of speculation as to whether or not the Fed will continue its extraordinary monetary policy or whether it will begin tapering 
its $85 billion a month bond purchasing program. The quantitative easing initiated thus far by the Fed has swelled the Fed's balance sheet to approximately $4 trillion. Currently, there is a 50-50 chance that the Fed will announce a form of tapering at tomorrow's meeting. Those of you who are familiar with our commentary know that it has been our view that the rally in U.S. equities has been entirely driven by the Fed's accommodative monetary policy. And therefore, should the Fed announce the beginning of the end of quantitative easing at tomorrow's FOMC meeting, we would expect to see the market react negatively. Alternatively, should the Fed announce no tapering, we would expect to see irrational exuberance dominate the session. In practical terms, no easing is likely to result in the S&P trading above yesterday's high at 1785 and auctioning back up to the multi-year high at 1812 and possibly extending the trading range above the 1812 price level. Certainly, if there is no quantitative easing, we would expect to see the S&P auction higher into the end of the year. Should the Fed announce that it will begin cutting back its bond purchasing program, even modestly, we would expect to see the S&P pull back and breach support at the two-day low at 1765 and trade down at least to Sunday's low at 1754. Depending upon the scope of the tapering, it's possible we may see the S&P breach support at Sunday's Globex low and trade down to the low of the lower trading range at or near 1735. If time permits, we would invite you to join us for tomorrow's broadcast during the FOMC announcement as we would expect to see significant volatility one way or the other. That concludes our recap for the S&P 500 E-mini. If you would like to follow our real-time commentary, we invite you to visit us online at www.followthebots.com. Log on and join us some morning at the open.